Right. And so we have two more guests. Hola, it's Gorro Chategui. And welcome. Welcome. Um, it's been very hard to speak English. Oh, I have seen you suffer. I didn't know I was there, you know, I could listen to you. But I didn't know I was there. Um, and so you could see me looking down and you thought I was okay there. And uh, well, it's okay. It's all fine. How are you then? First things first. How do you feel? Are you okay? Well, this is a question I didn't ask my previous guest, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I was so worried I had to speak English. Maybe our, our audience doesn't know it, but we, this morning, we were in Deusto as a meeting. We were, you know, um, having this talk and uh, well we're still here uh, awake late at night so we're very happy to be here but we kind of we're kind of exhausted uh, by this time well I was uh, listening to you and uh, your conversation was uh, very interesting I have to say that um, Olat and I were texting each other and uh, we were very happy listening to you and we're very happy to be here thank you for inviting us great uh, we've been talking to some uh, students in the US then we've been talking about uh, some Basque citizens that live in the US and now we're going to uh, hand the floor over to creators. Last year, we had a similar session here, and we had, the, we had a guest who also was a creator, because we like creation and we like creative people, and this is why you're here today. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. It is... I think very important to have people from different fields, um, creators that uh, create in mass in their own uh, fields. And uh, this is a good uh, opportunity for you to be seen and heard. So, um, so happy to have you here. Um, and uh, maybe I think, uh, well, we could uh, proceed same way we did in the first uh, chat we had with uh, other guests. Uh, um, can you please introduce yourselves uh, very briefly? We like our guests to introduce themselves instead of introducing them ourselves. So can you tell us um, something about you, Ichasho, Olaf, any of you? Well, Shall I go first? My uh, name is uh, Ichaso Paya. I come from Algorta, from Biscay. I uh, learned Basque at school as a child. My parents had a very good attitude towards the Basque language, and uh, we all, uh, three brothers and sisters, uh, can speak Basque. Uh, um, we are creators in Basque, we work in um, literature, uh, theatre, and um, improvise verse reading or Bertolaritza. Uh, so I'm also well, a cultural producer and I uh, work in Basque. So that's uh, a little bit about me. What I do is I promote uh, the Basque language and Basque uh, um, culture on the basis of the Basque language and uh, diversity, of course. Olat and uh, myself know each other. Olat worked uh, as a director in one of the theater plays I worked in. So we've already worked together. We have this nice relationship. 
Well, we picked you at random. I have to say it. It's not something that we we thought and we didn't think we, you already knew each other. Well, I must admit that I know more about Ichaso's background. Um, what are you doing right now, Ichaso? What are you working on at the moment? Well, um, I'm always creating. I'm always going through a creative process. Um, yes, but you have a project uh, related to women? Yes, we screened that uh, in late November in Getxo. And uh, now the idea is to move from village to village uh, with our musical play. And uh, well, we're very excited about that. And all that. What can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, you don't know me that much, do you? Well, uh, I know each other a little bit more than you. Well, I work in contemporary contemporary theatre, and uh, so I work with actual real uh, stories that um, are interested to me or have to do with the historical memory or um, the Basque rock or I've also been uh, working on the Basque diaspora lately and uh, I work uh, as a theatre director, theatre play director. Oh, how interesting. And can you tell us more about uh, your, your work about the Basque diaspora? Can you tell us more about that? Yes, the Chapara Institute and uh, the California State University of uh, Bakersfield uh, started a project uh, and gave me the opportunity to go there and uh, get to know better the diaspora, the Basque dias diaspora in Bakersfield um, in order to develop a theatre play that I'm going to be uh, writing both in English and in Basque language. I have the first version of a uh, play and I now need to find the time to develop it further. My, my intention is to um, perform it outside the Basque country and uh, talk about uh, Basque migrants abroad and talk about the uh, past players for us, but uh, especially I would like to concentrate, generally speaking, on migration. How interesting. Um, especially that approach you're going to be having outside the past country. This is a nice way of talking about the past country, but from a different perspective, from a different view. I like that. You are a Basque citizen. You live in the Basque country, and it's it's very nice of you to uh, put yourself in uh, other people's shoes. I mean, people that have left the Basque country. It's a nice exercise. Well, this is a contemporary theatre play that I'm writing, and uh, therefore um, this is why I, I want to convey my my viewpoint. I I. I can't give the floor to everyone in, in my theatre play, so I try and build these characters that um, are very telling for me. Mm. It will be a, a conversation or a speech um, about young people. So it's going to be just you playing? Yes. Um, well, I have a, a, a general question for both. When you create something, is there something that pushes you to create something? Uh, 
when I carried out my studies, I studied uh, because I wanted to tell a story and uh, I wanted to have technical, the technical knowledge that is required to tell that story. So when you go through your creative process, how do you go about it? Um, where do you find your motivation? What inspires you? Is there something that pushes you to create? Or do you, or do you say, I want to tell this story and uh, I will tell this story this way? Hola, do you want to go first this time? Okay. Yes, of course, it's something that pushes us. In, in my case, it's my personal interest in, in, in my own uh, creative processes because sometimes I work with other companies and they impose a, a topic on me. And that's different, of course. But when I work for myself, and there's always a personal interest, a very, very personal interest that pushes me, and that it's that urge, it's that need I have to to write the other place. And for me, this is a, a very um, something I do that that comes from from something that I have inside of me. And if I think, okay, I'm going to talk about environmentalism, and that that stays in my mind and is recurrent and keeps me, you know, working on a on a on a play until I I finish it. In my case, well, I am very passionate for what I do and. Uh, I'm, I've always been creative. My mum would always come late, pick me up, and I would use my time. I spent waiting for her, creating things. And it's um, because of her that I do this. And I can't help myself. I, I mean, I'm creative, period. Um, it is also true that uh, over time, you get more and more experience, you learn, you go deeper, and this gives you or opens new new opportunities or new new doors gives you additional opportunities um it's something that happens very naturally um and sometimes i wonder why do i need to create that much can't i stop well but i really can't uh, help myself uh, it's something that i i have inside of me and uh, um I think we're both quite similar in that same, in that sense, sorry. And, uh, Olat, you mentioned that you uh, were in Bakersfield last year. Um, in your... In, uh, your uh, after your creative processes, have you uh, worked outside the Basque Country, uh, presenting your work, uh, performing your theatre plays, and in if if so, how were you welcome? Uh, how did the uh, audience welcome you? Well, I've been uh, all over Spain myself, for instance, not with my own production. Uh, but with other uh, jobs I've carried out in Europe. Uh, I had this uh, theatre play about radical Basque rock music and we toured in Spain. And the only experience I had at, uh, in the US as, as a, a create, creator was in Bakersfield. They had this uh, symposium on the Basque uh, culture and it was, well, uh, very interesting going there and um, knowing more about what they do there. And um, your creative work is um, committed to the messages you want to convey. Have you ever felt uh, you had to overcome many obstacles? Have you been limited somehow? And how did you manage all that? Because when you do things that uh, are very interesting for you, that come from deep inside of you, you, you may have to overcome many hurdles. Yes, well, in my case, um, I've been very lucky. I had the chance to uh, go to Cuba 
uh, I had uh, the opportunity to get to know um, improvised first singers from Mexico and other countries. We were all um, improvising verses. I, I also went to Leon to sing improvised verses in Basque, also in Liverpool, where there is a teacher. And uh, we watched a film about uh, Basque improvised verses and so on and so forth. And I'm really happy when, whenever I'm invited uh, uh, abroad. So if you want to invite me, um, be very welcome. I'll be very happy to uh, come to wherever you are. As for the uh, obstacles, well, many, there are many of them. Um, a limitation for me would be um, being a new bus speaker or being a woman in singing improvised uh, verses in bass or coming from an urban area. But as I said earlier on, um, time gives you the opportunity to learn, to have more and more experience and um, little by little you um, manage all of this much better. I sometimes um, leave the stage and I wonder, but why on earth am I here? Why on earth am I doing this? But, um, you know, as I said earlier on, I can't help myself. I said it earlier in English, and you pro I probably didn't say it right, so now Mariela will translate it better, I hope. <laughs> I, I, as I was saying earlier on in English, that um, I was in a, an event that were held in uh, San Sebastian uh, with improvised verse singers, and it was incredible. I really loved it. I think there was this event in 2003 in Bilbao, and uh, I couldn't attend it. Well, I was there, uh, but I, I've seen the videos, and I said, "Oh, this this is wonderful." And uh, when I had the chance to go to uh, San Sebastian, it was incredible. It was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed it. And that experience um, was super powerful for me. I am not an improvised verse singer myself, but I am improvised verse lover. I really loved it uh, since a very early age. And um, I have this conflict with uh, my past identity because I, you know, I'm a bus speaker, but I don't feel really identified with things that many bus people love. And so I wondered, am I bus or not? And uh, when I attended this international event, I, I, I really was overwhelmed because there was, you know, uh, they were improvising verses, but they were not uh, only from the Basque country. There were people from Mexico, there were people from elsewhere in the world. And so, they connect through this tradition. And I said, oh, this is great. great. I want to explore this further. And uh, I, it was incredible seeing people from Murcia in southeastern Spain improvise verses. It was fantastic. It was wild. And um, it was cool. I, I really loved it. And at the same time, well, well, and my question is, I go to the point. Have you had this uh, conflict concerning your Basque identity? And how did you manage that? Well, I haven't had any conflict with my identity. I don't know how to say this. Um, I'm, you know, I'm Basque, I speak Basque, I live in Bilbao. Well, I'm talking about a general identity crisis, right? Not just uh, for being Basque, you know. I mean, this is the topic, all right? Identity crisis. Well, I think it's uh, inevitable, right? If we are feminists, uh, we need to wonder to what extent we are femi feminists, right? Um, 
you know, I try to keep my cool uh, about all of this. I think I, I have uh, things clear in my mind. So I'm quite calm. Um, my problem is not to be too demanding with myself. Oh, that's great. It's great, to, you know, for you to be able to say that you're cool with yourself. Well, in my case, you know, being cool or until I felt cool, um, I spent, uh, uh, I've spent um, some time uh, thinking about my identity. I've had a huge uh, crisis. As I was a kid, you know, for instance, if you wanted to be a good bass, you had to go to improvise for singing sessions. But if you were, uh, if you were wearing high heel shoes, there was a problem there. So um, you could be bass, and then I wanted to go to this uh, uh, TV show where people would sing in the Spanish television, and uh, nobody would understand why I wanted to go there. You know, I say I, I, I say this to my mom uh, when I'm going to have a shower because this is what the, the people that participated in that TV show used to do. Well, and I, you know, um, it was something that people wouldn't understand because if you're a Basque, you're not supposed to want to go to these kind of TV shows in Spanish television. Well, there are some contradictions there. Um, or maybe I wanted to uh, put on some makeup and people wouldn't feel that uh, fitted with uh, someone improvising versus in Basque. Well, but then little by little you learn the same thing about our bodies. Sometimes women think that our bodies are, uh, are a limitation to us. And then, well, you learn and you accept yourself and you make the most of all of your resources, especially as you are performing a theatre play. Well, it takes it takes time, uh, but uh, it is thanks to people that are a model for us to follow, like uh, Olaf, that, uh, that we've got a good mirror to look ourselves into. Yes, and uh, well, um, I I I feel comfortable now uh, with myself. It's uh, taken me some time, though. Yes, you you were talking about. Uh, the US, uh, uh, we've had some students uh, earlier on, and uh, before you we had uh, David, and um, we were saying that we have this romantic view of uh, the Basque country. And I think that um, matches with what uh, Itasha was talking about, about how rigid we've been and we still are with everything that's related to the Basque language and culture. So um, maybe that is uh, causing conflict. I mean, we in the Basque country we believe that uh, our um, challenge is that we manage for the past to be used in, in everything that's related to leisure in informal context because it's it's sometimes so rigid and people um, you know want us to use the Basque language um, in a perfect way in a very academic way yes i would like to pick on something that you just said um, because, you know, this is an interesting topic for our guests and for us. And um, uh, sometimes our story has been told from the outside, from other people, or from people that have had more resources than us. And they have told our story. So, um, I mean, if you Basque and you don't speak Basque, uh, where do you find your identity? Well, maybe in the accent that people from Bilbao have, a silly accent, maybe. Um, there was this TV show called Vallata Manita, which was awful, uh, which was full of stereotypes about the Basque. So if you add the language to that, 
the complexity is multiplied by a thousand because you can live a language uh, or experience a language in many different ways. And I think that uh, that romantic view was mainly caused or has also been caused or created by um, this identity that doesn't take um, language into consideration. Because I think that language adds up a great deal of complexity to the equation. You know, you can you can be Basque in in Twitch, or you can be Basque um, picking stones, lifting stones. In my experience in Bakersfield, for instance, um, I realized that they are very much focused on folkloric um, elements. And, but there are many past speakers there. there. There are many people that are belong to the second generation or third generation of past speakers, and that's wonderful. Um, it was incredible. And I was, I was uh, in Bakersfield with Ijazo's brother, by the way. And I still, there's, there's something that I still don't understand. I don't understand how that transmission uh, happens. We're all that, even if we have, if we live in different communities. But I don't know what's the main key, uh, the main element to that transmission from one generation to the other. That's something we should look into. Definitely. I don't know if that answers your question, but um, I'm astonished by that. Concerning language, when I went to Cuba, for instance, or to Liverpool to um, sing improvised verses in Basque, there were other artists that used uh, their musical instruments, for instance. But uh, you go there, you, 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 you dress normally, you put your hands on your back and you just sing. There's no music, nothing. Um, well, many times people tell me, well, um, that they like this musicality about, about the Basque language. And, uh, well, they, they seem to like that. But then there's, there's this mythology that uh, people relate us with. It's true. Um, and I, 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 I've really learned a lot about the history of the Basque country. Um, I mean, this is not a history that was uh, invented by Sabino Arana 100 years ago, right? There's, there's a history going back um, thousands of years in time. And um, um, coming back to the present and to uh, this question about what Basque culture is all about, um, this is, this is a, a conversation we need to, to have. I mean, it's a conversation we've had many times, I know. But, well, I think, I think we've had this conversation too many times, maybe. Well, I think we need to make a, a decision. Uh, what is Basque culture? Is it culture that is created in Basque? I don't know. I would say yes. It, um, Basque culture is the culture that is created in Basque. I mean, someone from Algorta who can't speak Basque uh, and uh, does something uh, creative, uh, is that uh, Basque culture? Well, probably it is. I don't know. It's hard to label things. Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard to make choices and make decisions here. I would say that uh, the Basque language is um, center stage, right? Yeah. I'm a bit of a clown myself sometimes. And I like to say, um, well, once we, we, we were in an event and um, um, music, song, 
the song was playing and people would say, well, we cannot dance to this music, we cannot work with this music in class. And there were some teachers there with some uh, students, with some children singing and dancing that song. And uh, I said, well, it seems that you can do something with this song. Indeed. Um, you may not agree with me, but um, and uh, but I like to say that reggae is the new punk, the reggaeton music style or genre. And people like to experiment with music. This is nothing new. Um, historically. The, there's this very specific genre that has been related to the Basque Country, and I think that's cool. I um, I think it's cool that we can each of us take the Basque language to a field and use it. I mean, we can open things up, and uh, and uh, I think that um, it has to be related to the Basque language to be. Um, part of the Basque culture. Well, I create in Basque, in the Basque language, and uh, I think I'm, what I do is Basque culture. Um, I mean, my experiences are related to a place, to a language, to an environment. But the truth is that I've never thought very much about this. Well, there's something that I always say. I come from a town where Spanish is mainly spoken. My parents um, learned uh, Basque uh, when they were adults, but in my family, the language that we've uh, mainly spoken traditionally uh, has been Spanish. And um, I always say, that uh, uh, it is thanks to um, stubborn monolingual Spanish people that I am a Basque speaker, right? And there are many people in the Basque country whose parents didn't speak Basque, but who do uh, speak Basque. This is our reality. And this makes things uh, much, much more complex. Because you see that they've made an effort and you say, well, this is, it's thanks to them that I am a Basque speaker. And it is a very interesting approach to things, by the way. But it's hard for me to say, well, this is not in Basque, but this is part of the Basque language, uh, culture, sorry. I, I understand the complexity of the issue. Well, this is like, you know, in, in, in our home, our parents were not Basque speakers, but they had a very good attitude towards uh, the Basque language. And in Gecho, in the Aldea, there are three um, characters, three profiles of people. Um, normally, you have two, uh, only people you can adopt or the um, role of people who understand Basque, or you can be a person who speaks. Basque. You can only have these two possibilities in the Basque country, but in Getcho you have one more possibility, which is a person that uh, does not speak Basque, but who has a good attitude towards uh, Basque. And so we have three profiles of people uh, in this case. And I think that this third profile should be uh, also available in other towns. Because it is thanks to people that have a good attitude towards the Basque language that the language itself has been disseminated so greatly over the past years and decades, right? It is thanks to that positive attitude. And uh, I think that uh, we need to take that into consideration. You said that you, you create both in Spanish and Basque, or well, that's Okay, because you speak Basque and you know uh, about the situation of the Basque culture. But imagine that you have a neighbor who can't speak Basque, who doesn't like Basque, 
who doesn't like Basque culture, and imagine that person creates something as well. Of course, the situation would be very different. Yes, indeed, you're right. So it's very hard to say. Uh, well, to me, it's clear that everything you do, um, either in Spanish or Basque, I think that's part of the Basque culture. I don't know if, if it's because of your values, but I would definitely say it's part of the Basque culture, even if your creation is in Spanish. Well, this uh, food for thought, and so we need to um, close the session now. I think we need to uh, arrange a second session someday, some other day. Um, is there anything you would like to add to close? Well, I would like to thank you for having me, of course. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Um, we would really gladly go overseas and uh, visit you, dear friends from the US. And thank you, Mariela, for your translation. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you. You're very kind. Thank you, guys. Well, I would also like to say thank you. I'm very sorry that uh, today I had to concentrate on technical issues uh, that uh, came along, but uh, it's been very nice having you and being able to talk to you. I really love these uh, conversations. I really do. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for organizing this event. I'm very happy to participate in further events and uh, I would like to greet our friends from abroad. Have a very nice day, guys. A big kiss to all of you, and a big kiss and a big hug to our friends overseas. Thank you, Iker and Maitane, of course, for creating this space. It is thanks to you that we are here. And yes, they've been working very, very hard organizing this event. So thank you, guys that invisible work you've done, hard work and good work. And hola, uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. And uh, well, let's see, this is the second uh, session, maybe next year, right? Well, I think that's all from us. Um, I would like to thank you all. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for participating in the chat and thank you for coping with a bad English. At least my English is very poor. I'm very sorry. Sorry about that. And thank you all. Thank you all for your attention. Have a wonderful day. See you soon. Bye. Akuragur. Skarikasko.